Well guys, after all the suspicion and basically no footage whatsoever, the day that we have been waiting for has finally happened. Hey guys, it's Kevin Meyer for the season premiere of American Horror Story. This is, of course, season 6, episode 1, chapter 1. That's really all we knew. Obviously, we was looking forward to this premiere. I think this is probably the most anticipated premiere of American Horror Story yet. And one of the most anticipated premieres in recent memory, because as we know, unlike previous seasons, they told us absolutely nothing about this season. No teasers, you know, there were teasers, but they were of course fake, you know, no character info, no plots, uh, you know, no plots, uh, threads, and especially not a theme, nothing. They told us absolutely nothing about this season, and that alone had me really curious. I'm like, alright, what are they exactly hiding? Because I knew that there's obviously a reason why they're hiding it. And I didn't know if it was because they they were, I don't know, thinking of a different idea, or it was something where they didn't want us to know too much about it, or really what was going on there, but I knew that obviously something was up, and uh, I was worried though, I was really worried that this was going to let me down, and um, you know, I really, I, I thought that because of all the hype and everything behind this premiere and the lack of knowledge, I really thought this was going to be something where I was very disappointed. But I have to say that coming out of it, I was really impressed with this premiere because I really didn't think this show could genuinely shock me, but damn did it. I mean, this is by far the most ambitious season of American Horror Story so far, and I really, um, you know, gotta applaud them for going in this direction. I really have, I know I've said that Ryan Murphy is doing too many shows, but I really think he's trying to do something different, and I really do appreciate that because so many people have said that... American Horror Story is the same every season. Well, this clearly shows you that that's not that. And let's just get into this because I really do want to talk about this. It's honestly very fascinating the way this started because they started off, they still didn't tell us what the theme was. And the way things started, I thought was really weird. At first, I thought that this was going to be like a flashback season because it said the season, you know, this, this, um, you know, this, um, episode is based on previous events and, you know, is based on true events. And I'm like, all right, that's really interesting. But then we see that we're in actually a documentary of sorts, which is called My Roanoke Nightmare, which is actually what the season is called, American Horror Story, My Roanoke Nightmare, and that is exactly what we are doing. We are doing a documentary type style, and basically, we meet our two characters, Matt and Shelby, they are our couple we're focusing on, but something cool about the season is that you have Andre Holland, who's playing Matt, and you have Lily Rabe, who's playing Shelby, but they're doing kind of like reenactments. All the actual stuff you see is reenactments. And that honestly makes a lot of sense because when you watch a documentary, 99% of the time you're going to see reenactments. And I think they did it really cool here. It actually was really well done. Basically, they are an interracial couple and they were, um, you know, they, they were an interracial couple and everything. Uh, Shelby is this gluten free. Um, who yoga instructor and they were attacked on the street by thugs playing this game and in the aftermath of the um basically you know Shelby was pregnant at the time and Matt was actually hospitalized and Shelby didn't know if he was going to make it he had to have I believe cornea surgery and she didn't really know what was going to happen there but luckily Matt was in fact okay but because of all the stress Shelby did end up undergoing a miscarriage which was very sad. I definitely did feel bad for Shelby just in that beginning. And I gotta say, this opening I thought was actually really well done because it was very simplistic. It wasn't anything too crazy. And it didn't really feel as much like horror. And I really thought it was interesting the way they did that here. Um, because they very quickly, you know, they're not, they don't really know what to do, obviously. This just really isn't working for them. So they decide that city life is just not working out. You know, things are just not turning out well for them. They want to kind of start over and they decide to move back east, and they find this rundown old farmhouse in uh, North Carolina that they know was built in 1792. And there were some sort of strange happenings that happened in this house, and they don't really know what's going on. There are like these hillbillies that give it to them, and uh, they're shocked to find out that they're able to buy the home for just 40000 for, you know, just uh, $40 million, which really isn't that much considering how much the house is, you know, how old the house is, which seemed like it was almost too good to be true, you know, they definitely can sense that something's going on. And that's something I do like about our two characters, that they're definitely not stupid, and I really thought that was well done. You have actually two pretty much very intelligent people here, you know, they definitely know that there's something going on, and I, I really did like that. So, basically, 
Shelby talks about in the documentary how they found themselves in front of the most beautiful old farmhouse, and uh, Shelby sensed danger there. You know, she definitely knew that there was something going on. She felt like there was just something off here. Matt, on the other hand, felt right at home. Now, I think it's probably because of what happened with Matt, with him being attacked. He probably just didn't want to feel like something bad was going to happen. But you can tell that Matt's just a little bit more content. Shelby knows that there's definitely something going on, but Matt's someone who's like, oh, everything's fine, don't worry about it. Um, but right away you know that something is gonna go wrong here. And then we cut to the credits, and I gotta say, the first seven minutes, by the way, this this was how they did the first seven minutes, we cut to the credits, and it still just says American Horror Story. They didn't reveal, actually, it was called My Roanoke Nightmare, till a little bit later in the episode, and I thought it was actually really clever the way they did that, because it made us all going, what? Like, I, I was so confused as to what was going on here, but I thought they did a very good job. They didn't do it to confuse us, they did it to show that this is not gonna be like other seasons. I mean, to my knowledge, it seems like this is a season where they're completely annexed the intro and I'm all for that if they're gonna do that if they're not going to have an intro this season I think it's all the better for it because again this is a much different kind of season and I really do appreciate that but anyway let's get back in the episode so we see they go to work quickly on remodeling the home and making it their own and they were on a very tight budget and spend most of their savings on the house and it's not long before strange things begin happening so one night while they're in bed, there's a strange howling noise outside. We see Shelby begs him to stay in bed, but he goes outside to investigate. He knows that definitely something is happening. Someone's outside throwing trash cans at him, which is really weird. Now, Matt thinks it's just local hillbillies that are, you know, harassing them because they were in an interracial relationship, which that definitely makes sense. I mean, even nowadays, when you see someone's in an interrela interracial relationship, some people might give you weird looks, especially kind of from the South, and I think it definitely made sense why Matt thought that, and I will say it was kind of weird to see Cuba Gooding Jr. and Sarah Paulson as a couple, be considering how different they were in People vs. O.J. Simpson, but I thought they did a very good job at getting into these characters and showing that they're not People vs. O.J. Simpson. So... Obviously, we know that something's going on. A few days later, Shelby's then at home alone when she hears what sounds like a hail storm outside. It's really weird. There's like this hailstorm, but it's not hail we see because she goes inside to investigate and she sees human teeth raining from the sky. Really weird. I don't know why that's happening, but there's literally human teeth raining from the sky, so definitely something's up. Matt then returns home, sees how shaken up she is, and she cries to Matt about the human teeth, but he reassures her that it's just hail. And I thought that definitely, again, I think Matt's just trying to look at everything logically. He doesn't want to believe that something's going on. I think he thinks that Shelby's still paranoid because of what happened, and he's doing whatever he can to make, I think, both of them feel better. And I think we definitely do see that here. So Matt's a traveling salesman, he prepares for his first trip out of town since moving to the new house, and he's nervous about leaving Shelby home alone, because obviously he knows that she's seeing things, and he assure she assures him that he she will just be fine, and Shelby was actually looking forward to some alone time, you know, she felt that maybe this will get her a chance to enjoy the house, because Matt clearly enjoys the house, and he likes where they are, but she just isn't really, you know, feeling it, she feels like there's definitely something going on, and she kind of wants to take the opportunity to see if she's right or not. So she's preparing dinner for herself. A storm rolls in. It's getting late and she heads upstairs and she sees two women in the hallway of their house and they disappear as quickly as they appear. Very weird the way that was done. And again, I thought they did that very well here. They don't reveal a ton of stuff in this premiere. It's very, very minimal and it's probably the most minimal premiere we've ever had. I mean, even the scares in this episode, we don't really know what's going on. We just kind of see two women and I believe that these two women were in fact um, you know, there was, they did have some main characters in this first episode but they didn't tell us and I thought that was actually really cool the way they did that. So Shelby turns on all the lights to investigate. She knows that definitely something's going on but she's the only one in the house and she says, you know, is anyone there? Because she knows that something's going on. She doesn't know if it's neighbors or something. So she grabs a glass of wine, heads outside for a dip in the hot tub by herself. An arm comes out of the shadows, pushes Shelby's head underwater. She struggles to breathe, and we don't know what's going on. At this point, I wasn't really into it. I thought that they were doing a lot of unnecessary jump scares, but it kind of made sense looking back at it why they did these jump scares. It's mainly because of the fact that there's definitely something going on, and obviously, you know, Shelby, we can see, is definitely not paranoid. There is, in fact, something going on here, and we don't know what it is. So Matt then gets a call from the police, rushes home. He learns that Shelby called the police and reported that she was assaulted by men in pitchforks and costume. And 
the cop doesn't seem too concerned about because it just doesn't sound true. It sounds like she's crazy and that she's batshit or whatever and that she's someone that's just suffering from a miscarriage and he says it was probably just the Polk family and, you know, the hillbillies and everything just playing pranks on them and he advises Matt to get a gun to protect themselves and the cop isn't taking the complaint too seriously, we see. He said they found no evidence of Shelby's story and there's no way that it could possibly be true. I will admit that part kind of pissed me off, you know, dumb cops and everything. I understand it, it called for the episode, but I just thought that was kind of dumb the way that was, you know, where the cops not think that anything's going on. Because, again, Shady House, Shady Town, it kind of just makes sense. I guess they just haven't really looked into it, though. We'll have to see what happens there. Um, but Matt then heads inside to talk to Shelby. She swears that she isn't lying. Men attacked her, held her underwater. And they head to bed, but Matt is up all night. He's obviously rattled by what happened. You know, he knows that obviously something's going on and that he knows that his wife is not crazy. So he hears noise outside, runs outside to investigate again. He finds this skin pig lying on the porch. By far the creepiest scene in the episode, let me just say. That scene scared the shit out of me. I had no idea what was going on there. There's just this pig on the porch, though. And we don't know what it's about, but some definitely is happening. And Matt decides to not to tell Shelby what happened because he already knows that she's paranoid and he just feels that he's going to startle her more and it's going to make her more and more erratic. And he buries the animal in the woods because he, I think, is, again, he doesn't really want them to go through anything. They're already, we're going through a lot of shit and he kind of just wants this to be a relaxing, you know, experience for them. He wants this to be, you know, a new world, a new, you know, starting over. That's what it's supposed to be, a fresh start. And he, I think he wants it to stay that way. So, basically, he has to head back to work the next day, so he set up security cameras on the property to keep an eye on things, and he also has his sister, Lee, played by Angela Bassett, come stay with Shelby while he's away. Something very interesting about uh, Lee's character, by the way. By far, my favorite character, let me just say. I thought Lee was the best character in this uh, episode that we got into. I really love what they did with her character. But, I will say uh, that the woman that's playing Angela Bassett, not the one in the reenactments, I'm talking about the one in the documentary, is actually the same woman um, from episode 3 of Murder House when that woman wanted to kill herself. So, I thought it was an interesting connection. I don't know if it's the same character, but if it is, that's really cool. It could honestly happen because we know it happened in hotels, so I feel like it could happen here, but we'll have to see. I think that definitely is very interesting. Um, but then we get this really nice uh, backstory about Lee... So, Lee, we found out, used to be a cop, actually, and, uh, we, you know, she was a cop and everything, and this is what she really enjoyed, but she had this incident at work because she became very addicted to painkillers, and I thought it was interesting the way that she said that painkillers are actually more addicting than heroin. I think that's really interesting we found that out, but she began acting very erratically at work. We don't really know what happened, but she was fired, and she ended up killing, I believe she killed the drug dealer that they were investigating, and I believe he offed himself, and then her husband divorced her and took their daughter, so she's been through tons of shit. We definitely do see that. She really hasn't had the best life, and I think just in those few moments, we really do care for her character. I honestly felt the worst for Lee out of everyone. So Lee and Shelby, we see they really don't get along at all. Lee thinks that Shelby's yoga instructor job is phony and stupid, especially because she used to be a cop, and that Shelby's so upset about that, when Lee, I think, is kind of... I think she's kind of jealous of Shelby because Shelby's someone that's turned out very well. Shelby has a nice life, and uh, Shelby, you know, she makes her live. She makes a living do being a yoga instructor, and I think that to Lee is just not really a legit job. And I think it's gonna be interesting to see what happens with that. But after Matt leaves for work, it, we can see that, uh, like I said, they really don't get along. It's not long before strange things begin happening again. Shelby's cooking dinner in the kitchen. She turns her back. Someone takes her knife off the counter and stabs it. Really weird again. We don't know what's happening with that. But after Matt leaves for work, uh, you know, basically, uh, she stabs in the meat that is, she is cooking. Shelby is certain that it's just Lee doing it to mess with her. She feels that Lee is just trying to make her paranoid because, again, they really don't get along. And Lee thinks that Shelby's making up all the stories that she has been telling Matt. You know, she doesn't believe a thing she says. She thinks she's kind of crazy. But later that night when she has to bed, Lee starts hearing strange noises, and she can tell something's going on here. So someone rolls a bottle of wine in her bedroom, Lee freaks out, she thinks that Shelby again is doing it to mess with her. This part I thought was a little bit silly, I will say that, and this is my one complaint with the episode, that I do think we things moved a little bit too quickly here. I don't know, I think we could have gotten a little bit more into the relation of Lee and Shelby, and we really didn't do that as much as we could have. But again, it's only the first episode, not really going to complain, um... 
Some Matrix security cameras from out of town. He notices men with torches walking around their house, and Matt tries to call Lee and Shelby to warn them, but they're too busy arguing with each other to hear their phones. They don't even, you know, they're just arguing back and forth, blaming each other. Uh, you know, Lee's calling Shelby out, Shelby's calling Lee out, and they hear someone in the basement. They head downstairs to investigate. They can hear a man calling for help, and they sneak through the dark basement to investigate. And they find this TV playing in the basement. It's someone's homemade movie, we find out. And, and Shelby realizes that whoever is filming the video filmed it outside of their house. So there's kind of like a sinister element here, which I thought was actually kind of cool. I like that they're definitely, we find out, someone filmed things going on outside their house. We don't know exactly what it was, but definitely something happened within the house. And suddenly the power goes out, almost as if this video was forbidden and that it was intentional that it went out. So Lee and Shelby can then hear dozens of footsteps upstairs. They hide in the basement and wait and listen for the people to leave. They head upstairs and find hundreds of strings tied throughout the entire house, creating webs and knots. There's voodoo dolls hanging from them. Just a lot of weird shit going on here. So Matt rushes home, he's shocked to see the voodoo dolls, and Shelby and Lee then explain that the that men came and locked them in the basement, made them watch a freaky video while they hung the dolls all over, and Matt head down, heads downstairs with them, watches the video, he sees this freaky monster that looks half pig and half man. I do like that no one's in denial right now, I like that they all know what's going on, because I think that would be annoying if you had one character that didn't think what was going on. That was something about season one that kind of did piss me off a little bit, so I do like that no one's really in denial here. So Shelby cries as she wants to move immediately, because she knows that obviously this house is haunted, she knows that something's going on here. Matt refuses, and he still, for some reason, thinks that the Polk family is just trying to scare them off so they can have the house, which I think is really dumb. I don't know why he thought that. I was thinking that maybe he would be, you know, wouldn't be in denial, but it seems like he is, and I'm hoping that this doesn't piss me off. I get it, I get what Matt's saying, that obviously because they're an interracial couple, I understand that, but... I think it's going to get a little bit annoying if Matt continually is like, oh, it's just the, you know, the, uh, the Polk family, because it's clearly something's going on here, and it should definitely be, you know, Matt definitely, I think it should be confirmed to Matt that definitely something is happening when we get to the final scene in this episode, which is just crazy. Shelby runs upstairs and out the front door, she jumps in her car and begins racing down the road. Matt calls her on her call in her cell, and she looks down, then crashes into this old woman who's actually Kathy Bates. Very subtle way they did that, let me just say. They didn't say it was Kathy Bates. We didn't know she was going to be in this episode. She didn't have a line, but that, in fact, was Kathy Bates. I thought it was kind of cool the way they did that. But she's standing in the middle of the road, and why she's just standing there, I don't really know. But there's obviously a reason why she was there. Shelby then jumps out of the car to see if the woman's okay. She gets off the ground and then wanders into the woods, and almost as if nothing happened to her. Almost as if, you know, it was just like, she just brushed it off, and it's really weird the way that was done. Um, but Shelby races after her, but she loses the woman. She gets lost in the dark woods. She wanders around calling for help. She stumbles across more of the voodoo dolls hanging from the trees. She makes a run for it, runs straight to the men with torches. She's surrounded by them, a man with a bloody head scream for help, and then it cuts to black. Literally cuts to black. Credits, no promo or anything, and that is the way this episode ends. So yeah, this was a really weird out there premiere, definitely, like I said, there's a lot of unanswered questions, and I honestly really do applaud them for that, because there are a lot of things I really do love about this season. First of all, something that I definitely do want to comment them is the simplicity of it all. This is probably the most simplistic season we've had of American Horror Story since probably the first season. The first season only had like six main characters, and it appears that this season, so far at least, we only have three main leads, which is very interesting, and I like the show is doing that. I think a problem the show has had, especially in Freak Show, Hotel this wasn't much of a problem for me at least, I think Freak Show there's definitely more of a problem, is that there were way too many characters who were very interesting, but they just didn't really know what to do with them, and they only focused on the characters that fans really liked. And this season, it seems like they are, in fact, going back to basics, and I really do appreciate them for doing that. It kind of feels like a throwback to Murder House, but there's a lot of things about Murder House this season does not have. You know, there's no adultery, at least, so far in this season. Shelby and Lee, they're not in a broken, you know, Shelby and Matt, they're not in a broken relationship, and that's something I do like. I like that right now, uh, nothing, you know, this isn't destroying their marriage, because it always seems like there's that destroying marriage thing, and this is different. This is a loving couple, and 
I like that. I like that the reason they're starting over is not because of what someone did. It's because of something that happened to both of them and an experience that they both went through, which again is very different, and I really do like that. Let's talk the performances in this first episode because it's kind of weird to talk about the acting because again, it's those things where they have the documentary and then the reenactments. Sarah Paulson obviously is great. I really like her character as Shelby. I'm looking forward to seeing where she's going to go. Cuba Gooding Jr., again, weird to see him with Sarah Paulson, especially because of people versus O.J. Simpson. But I'm honestly very happy that he's doing this show. I think that he's a great fit on this show. I really love, you know, him as an actor. I think he's doing a very good job here. I'm really looking forward to seeing that. And you really do believe these two are in love. I think they did some really good stuff with their characters. Looking forward to seeing where they go with that. But like I said, my favorite character by far in this episode was Lee, played by Angela Bassett, for two reasons. One, because I thought she was just a very interesting character, and I thought by far she was the most sympathetic character. But two, it is everything I've wanted in Angela Bassett's character for the past, you know, two seasons. Because I feel like she's played the same character for three seasons. Yes, they've been different characters, but they all kind of go in the same direction. She starts off as a sassy black woman who has beef with someone, and she tries to get revenge, and it doesn't really work in the end. This season, it's much different. She's going through, you know, a personal experience. She clearly has been shit on all her life. She has this relation with Shelby that's different, and she's not really aiming to get any sort of revenge. And that's going to be something I'm very interested in. I'm looking forward to seeing more of their history, their clashing, that's something I really do applaud them for. But the other thing I really do applaud them for, again, is that Evan Peters is going to be in this season. Finn Whitrock is going to be in this season. Uh, you know, Wes Benley is going to be in this season. But there were only three main characters in this premiere, and that's very, very ballsy, considering the fans they have... 99% of them are girls who think that Evan Pierce is like the most attractive guy ever. He's a great guy. I will say that he's very talented. I think he's one of the best actors on the show by far, especially with him as Mr. March. There are rumors that he might play Charles Manson, and honestly, I could see that happening. I think that honestly could be very true. Um... Lady Gaga, though, wasn't even in this first episode, so very interesting the way that was done. I thought, again, just it was very ballsy the way they did that. They definitely wanted to focus more on the story, and I really did love that. My only problem with this first episode is mainly just all the denial that we're in. I, I'm worried that this is going to be the entire season. If the entire season is going to be us in complete denial, not knowing what's going on, that's going to get annoying. The fact they didn't release a promo or a poster or anything, come on. I mean, we know what the season is. You don't have to be so secretive. But I get it. It's going to be a documentary. Now, how this is going to work for an entire season, I don't really know because I just don't really know if they're going to be able to keep it consistent for 13 episodes. But again, we don't know if they actually have 13 episodes. They might just have 10 episodes. I don't know. They had 12 episodes last season, so maybe they don't have 13 episodes. And again, that's something that I might be in complete denial about, and I like that. There are a lot of things here that we don't know about, like what actually is going on in that house. Now, I'm not someone who knows about the Lost Colony. Uh, a lot of people said that was associated with the season, and it is. You know, Roanoke Colony, that's about the Lost Colony. I don't know much about that story. I'm probably going to do my research. Um, but if Charles Manson's associated with that, then I do think we can factor him into this story. But clearly, someone it filmed something that happened in the house in the 1970s, and I think that's definitely connected to what's going on with Shelby, Lee, and Matt right now. We'll have to see what happens with that. That's going to be interesting. Who was that woman that Kathy Bates was? Why'd she just run to the woods? We don't know what's going on there. And I think this season so far is genuinely creepy. I was definitely creeped out by a couple scenes. I definitely was thrown off a bit. And again, I like that her characters are smart. They're not stupid. Matt's someone I think is just, he's kind of like logical. You know, he wants to think logically. He's trying to think of really what's going on. And I think it's going to be interesting to see um, what happens with him. Like I said, him denying what was going on kind of annoyed me after a bit but I'm going to tell you guys something that I knew going into this premiere and something that I'm going to stick with uh, for the rest of the season is that my main problem with Hotel is that I set my expectations at a certain level and I was thrown off by it. And like I said in my Big Brother review, I'm not going to let this season premiere cloud my judgment in the entire season. For all I know, this season could be way different than this premiere led on. I mean, this could be something where there's going to be this huge reveal. And Ryan Murphy said, don't even try to predict what's going to happen this season because we're not going to guess it. There's going to be apparently this huge twist and... I'm going to tell you guys right now, I think the twist is that these actors that, you know, the documentary that we're seeing are actually actors performing it. That's what I think is going to happen. I, I don't know, but I kind of just have this feeling that that's really what's going to happen. Um, 
the promo, I believe, ended up, the teaser, I think, that was real, ended up being the Chains one. I think that's the one that ended up being the one where she, like, cuts the chains and everything. Kind of weird that that was the one that was revealed, but it was the, but again, it was the most secretive out of all. That was the one we really didn't know was going on, uh, and I think that definitely is very interesting. Overall, guys, I'm really intrigued. I'm definitely looking forward to seeing what happens the rest of the season. Uh, again, very weird premiere. Probably the weirdest one American Horror Story has ever done. But I really do applaud them for going in this different direction. It's very hard this late in to surprise an audience. And I really do applaud them for doing so. I think it's a commendable move. I think it's a very ambitious move. And the fact that they're coming up with original ideas, something like a documentary, which I don't really believe has been done before. I mean, obviously, there's been found footage movies. But not really a TV series. I can't really think of the last time there was a TV series that was a fake documentary. It's really cool the way that's done. I really like that approach so far, and I, I really hope it is going to work for this season. It works so far. I like it. Hopefully, it's consistent, and uh, so far, I'm definitely on board. Maybe I'll lose interest. Hopefully, I don't. But like I said, the simplicity of it uh, between that and just the different direction they're going... I'm definitely interested, but let me know what you guys thought of this premiere. Love to hear your thoughts on it. I know a lot of you are probably confused as to what happened. I was confused as well, but it's really not as confusing as you think, but it's kind of supposed to be. You know, it's there's a lot of things I could say. Honestly, I could be wrong about 99% of what I'm saying. I probably am, but we'll have to see. But that's my review. Hope you enjoyed it. Let me know what you guys thought of this premiere overall. What Are you, are you excited for this season? Um, I, I'm kind of pissed they didn't give us a promo because I just want to see a little bit more of what's going on. Uh, but I'm definitely hooked. I'm definitely looking forward to the rest of the season. But I will see you guys in my next, which will be for tonight's episode of Mr. Robot. And I will see you guys for that. Okay, bye.